So we have a pretty loaded question today. It's going to be somewhat of a longer video, but a very important concept to wrap your mind around. So what is needed to convert percent ionization to percent depth dose for electrons? What is the replacement, in scatter, obliquity, and gradient factor? And then how would this change if you have a parallel plate chamber? So right off the bat, Percent ionization is what we actually measure with our ion chambers. We don't directly measure percent depth dose. And so within the software that we're using, normally there are calculations that will automatically convert percent ionization to percent depth dose for us. So if you want to do this for electrons specifically, ion chambers, you need to correct for the restricted mass stopping power ratio from water to air. So what that looks like is L over rho and water compared to air. And know that this is a function of mean energy and depth. And you also need the replacement factor, P replacement. So you would find your percent ionization number, you would multiply it by these two, and that is how you would get percent depth dose. Also remember that clinically, normally, there is very little difference. So percent ionization, for the most part, we can assume is percent depth dose. That's what we use. But if you're asked this, you need to know what would you do to make those very fine details. And for example, for commissioning of a new linear accelerator, you may want to actually do this conversion, even though it would be a very small one. So we mentioned this uh, P replacement. So what is this? So that is the chamber replacement factor, which is dependent on the air cavity diameter and the mean electron energy. So this accounts for in scatter, obliquity, and the correction factor. So it's multiple factors in the one. And you have to remember, you want to find the dose in water as if that ion chamber were not there but the ion chamber is there. And so you have to come up with a factor to ultimately account for the ion chamber. So now let's dive into the three factors here. So what is in scatter effect? So it accounts or rather the effect, the in scatter increases the electron fluence in the chamber cavity. Because if you think the electrons are scattering out of the air cavity, being less than expected if it were intact medium, which makes sense. Remember, we want full water right there where we have an ion chamber. That's We want the dose in water, but we have a chamber filled with air there, so we have to account for that in scatter. Now we move to the obliquity effect. So the obliquity decreases the fluence in the cavity, because as the electrons travel in straight lines in the air cavity, instead of the oblique paths, like if it were straight up air. So these things are affecting the dose in different ways because we have, again, our ion chamber within the water compared to having just water by itself. And then finally, we do have this gradient factor and that allows us, essentially takes care of the displacement in the effective point of measurement. So remember that is 0.5 R cav for electrons. And this is dependent on the cavity radius and the mean energy. So it's very important to know these factors, be able to rattle them off and say, okay, how do you measure them? Where do you get the numbers? What chamber do you use? This is a TG51 question that's very important and they could easily ask you and expect you to know all the details of it. So now how does all of this change if we have a parallel plate chamber? Well, the fluence, there's a, a P fluence correction factor as well that we didn't discuss here, but there is one. There is also that P gradient. Those can be ignored because we are working with a parallel plate chamber. However, that rho or L over rho correction does need to be applied. And again, the, the gradient factor and fluence can be ignored because your effective point of measurement is now the front surface of the parallel plate chamber, not within this 
ion chamber. So ultimately, what we have as a, a final conclusion is our percent depth dose in water is equal to our percent depth ionization. Again, that's going to be in water. That's where you measure this. That is going to be multiplied by, let's see, how can I best write this so it makes some sense? L over rho of water to air multiplied by the replacement factor. And that is going to be at your depth. And then similarly, it is going to be L over rho water to air multiplied by the replacement factor. And that is going to be at D max. Because remember, we're talking percent depth dose. So there we go. That is a somewhat a thorough explanation of how to convert these, what these factors mean. However, feel free to dive deeper, ask questions if you have any, and just be sure you know the concept well going into your part three exam. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks again and best of luck.